Hi guys. Today I want to talk to you about Taylor polynomials. So hopefully you watched the pre-class video. So let's recall the definition of the nth Taylor polynomial. Nth Taylor polynomial of degree n for function f centered at x is equal to a is given by the following equation. p sub n of x is equal to f of a plus f prime of a over 1 factorial times x minus a to the first power plus f double prime of a over 2 factorial times x minus a quantity squared plus a bunch of terms up until we come to f, the nth derivative of, of f evaluated at a over n factorial times x minus a all to the nth power. Right, so let us notice here that f of a, f prime of a, f double prime of a, those are all constants. And the only function that I have here is my polynomial terms, x to the um, zeroth power, x to the first power, x to the second power, and um, coming up to x to the nth power. So this is an nth degree polynomial, right? Uh, what I could do is I could take the limit as n is approaching infinity of this polynomial, and we're going to get a sum of infinite terms. Right, so I'm going to be taking the limit of this partial sum of Taylor polynomials as n is approaching infinity and n is the upper bound on my partial sum. And then I have another index k that goes from zero to n of the kth derivative of f evaluated at a over k factorial times x minus a to the kth power. Let's see. Boom, 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 like this. So this thing right here that has an upper bound on the index of n, this is an nth partial sum. s sub n, and that's creating a sequence. And as I take the limit of that sequence, which also depends on x, I have an infinite series with k ranging from zero to infinity of the kth derivative of f evaluated at a over k factorial times x minus a to the kth power. Right, and we have a special word for that, or a special term. We call this the Taylor series for the function f. Taylor series for f, and this is centered at x is equal to a. So this is pretty neat. There is a really nice pattern here that's happening. We also have another piece of terminology that we use really often. If my center for the Taylor series is a is equal to zero, I call that the Mac Maclaurin series. Um, not, not just I, people do. <laughs> so if centered at a is equal to zero, we call this the Maclaurin series. So Maclaurin series is a special case of the Taylor series. Okay, with this in mind, let's talk about the pre-class questions. And then we'll take a look at error. And then 
do another example and we will be good to go. So for the pre-class questions, the function that I'm looking at is the exponential e to the x. And in part a, I'm looking at the linear approximation for f at a is equal to zero. All right, so linear approximation, that means I am going up to x to the first power. So p1 of x, this is my first Taylor polynomial going out to the first um, power of x it's going to be f of a plus f prime of a over one factorial times x minus a to the first power where a is equal to zero so let's plug that in f of zero plus f prime of zero times x x minus zero right what is f prime of x f prime of x will be e to the x I evaluate that at zero and I get one. And also f of zero is one. So I have one plus x as my first Taylor polynomial. Or a Taylor polynomial of degree one. I'm going out to x to the first power. Okay, now let's talk about the quadratic approximation for the exponential. Quadratic approximation. So this is the second Taylor polynomial for f at the same center. So now I'm looking for p2 of x because I'm going out to x squared and I have f of a plus f prime of a over one factorial times x minus a plus f double prime of a over two factorial times x minus a quantity squared. Okay, so I notice that my second Taylor polynomial consists of the first Taylor polynomial, right, which is that first partial sum plus an extra term. So let us fill this one out. F double prime of x is just another e to the x. So then what I'm going to get is, hmm, I'll use another sheet of paper for that. P2 of x is going to be f of a, which is one, plus f prime of a, which is one, um, times x plus f double prime of a, which is 1, because f double prime evaluated at 0 as e to the 0, which is 1. So it's going to be 1 over 2 factorial times x squared. So this is my Taylor polynomial of degree two. And finally, let's talk about the cubic approximation for f at a is equal to zero. So p3 of x will be f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a plus f double prime of a over two factorial times x minus a quantity squared plus this third or fourth term f triple prime of a over three factorial times x minus a to the third power. So I have my previous partial sum which is one plus x plus one half x squared plus f triple prime of a, f triple prime of x is still e to the x evaluated at zero. This will still be one. One over three factorial, three factorial is three times two times one or six times x cubed because a is equal to zero. Right, so this is my Taylor polynomial of degree three. 
And one thing I just really quickly want to point out is that when I had a Taylor uh, polynomial of degree one, I actually had two terms because my summation for the Taylor series starts at k is equal to zero. So when I'm going out to um, the first power of x, I have k is equal to zero plus k is equal to one term, so two terms. For the Taylor polynomial of degree two, I have three terms. And then for the Taylor polynomial of degree three, I have four terms. Right, so this is my pattern. And this is really cool. And if I'm taking the limit of my partial sums, if I'm taking the limit of my Taylor polynomials, what will happen is I will have a Taylor series. So let us find that for the exponential because it looks like um, a really nice, a really nice pattern, right? I have one plus x plus one half x squared plus one six x cubed. So this will continue on. So here is our question. What is the Taylor series, or in this case, this is the Maclaurin series, right? Because we're centered at x is equal to zero. What is the Maclaurin series for e to the x? So I notice that any derivative of e to the x will still be e to the x, right? I don't um, have to worry about chain rule because the derivative of the argument is just one. So then whenever I evaluate this at the center, I will always, always get one for the evaluation of any derivative. So then I have the following statement that an approximation in terms of an infinite series for the exponential is equal to the sum k goes from zero to infinity of one over k factorial times x to the k x minus zero to the kth power so rewriting this i have x to the k over k factorial as k goes from zero to infinity and this is a really really nice result this is the maclaurin series for e to the x Um, it's very elegant. Okay, well, with this in mind, let's talk a little bit about error. And we'll start with just conceptually what Taylor polynomials represent. Taylor polynomials, not the Taylor series, Taylor polynomials are an approximation, right? Depending on how many terms I have, my approximation will get better or worse. So that is, I think I want purple for this one. The idea of Taylor polynomials is that they approximate my function p sub n of x is a, an approximation to f of x near x is equal to a. So typically, the more terms we use in the Taylor polynomials, the higher order uh, polynomial we have, the better the approximation. This is generally true. Typically, the higher the degree of the polynomial, the more terms we have in our approximation and the better the appro approximation is. But even with the best of approximations, we still have error. So that's why we have to talk about what error will be like for this thing. And here we'll just, um, we'll be pretty, pretty abstract, right? 
but for any approximation, I should have an error. So here, I will be looking at the difference between my actual function, which is f of x that I'm trying to approximate, and its approximation, which is p n of x. And so I'll be looking at the difference between the two, and I just want the absolute value of it. Right, so one thing that I want to point out here is that my error depends on x. And as far as I know, we haven't really encountered this before. An error is a function of x. So what this means is that for every x, the error might be different. Different. Right, I might think about finding bounds on my error. Um, that might be interesting. But in general, if you give me an X, I could give you a different error, right? And there might be patterns in the error because it's a function that we could, um, that we could find for, for any different function. The error will depend on the function. Okay, all right, so now let's do another example after this conceptual um, avenue. So here we want to find the Maclaurin series. For sine of x. So Maclaurin series, I know that I'm centering this at zero and sine of x, it shows a lot in pendula. Right, so um, we can have a small angle approximation, and we might want to approximate sine of x um, with polynomial terms, right? So what I will start with is just by finding the patterns for the derivatives of sine of x. So f of x first is sine of x. This is the zeros derivative of my function f prime of x will be cosine of x, f double prime of x will be negative sine of x, f triple prime of x will be negative cosine of x. The fourth derivative of sine is ooh, positive, let's see, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so this will be positive sine of x. And then it looks like our pattern cycles back through and the derivative of sine is cosine. So this, the, my derivatives are, are cyclical as, as we would expect for a trigonometric function. Okay, so then let's evaluate all of my derivatives at the center, a is equal to zero. So f of zero is sine of zero, which is zero. f prime of zero is cosine of zero, which is one. f double prime of zero is zero. f triple prime of zero is negative one. The fourth derivative of sine evaluated at zero is zero. And the fifth derivative of sine evaluated at zero is one. So I have a very interesting thing that's happening. I will have terms that are equal to zero and the terms that are not equal to zero in terms of the derivatives, they look to be odd terms or odd powers of the derivative. So I have the first power, then I have the third power or the third derivative, and then I have the fifth derivative, right? So we can imagine that this odd poweredness will continue on for, for this function. Okay, so now searching through for my Taylor or McLaurin, McLaurin series, I know that I will be looking for a pattern and I'm looking at the kth derivative evaluated at zero of sine of x all over k factorial times x to the k. 
So the first couple of terms, I will have f of zero plus f prime of zero times x plus f double prime of zero over two factorial times x squared on and on. Okay, f of zero, what is f of zero? I look back at my work, f of zero is zero. F prime of zero is one, so I just have X. F double prime of zero is zero. Then I would be hitting the, the third derivative, which is negative one. So I have negative one over three factorial times X cubed. Plus, I will have the fourth derivative, which is zero plus the fifth derivative, which is one over five factorials times x to the five, plus zero, and this will just continue on. So I have a beautiful pattern emerging and I will condense my series. I have x minus one over three factorial x cubed plus one over five factorial x to the fifth um, minus on and on. What I see is that I have a changing of the sign. I have plus minus plus minus. So when I come up with a pattern for when I come up with a pattern for my series, I will have to have an alternating sign in there. Negative one to the K. I will still have the K factorial, but all the terms that I'm seeing in the factorial, they're odd terms, right? And we actually do know a formula for all odd numbers. It's two K plus one. So 2k plus 1 factorial. And then I have x to that odd power. So I have x, x to the power of 2k plus 1. Right, so I've taken care of my actual variable or my actual polynomial term. I've taken care of the changing of the sign. I've taken care of the derivative, which will be 1. And then I've taken care of the... Um, the factorial that shows up, right? So this is, this is the Maclaurin series for sine. One thing that we might ask is why do we only have odd powers of x in my series for sine of x? Why only odd powers? And the reason is sine of x is an odd function. It's a very bizarre odd function. So if I was to plot it, right, it would look something like this, where this is zero down the middle. So I have x and sine of x. And by odd, I mean that sine of negative x is equal to negative sine of x. So if I look at a couple of values on my sine curve, if I look at some negative x, I will be hitting this hump of my sign. And then what is that value? It is the value that is on the, on the right hump, but with the sign flipped, right? So this is an odd function and it stands to reason that odd functions will be made up of odd polynomials in, in terms of, in, in, in the Taylor series or the Maclaurin series because the series would have to preserve the symmetry of, of my function. So this is a really interesting result. And with that in mind, I, I think we're all ready to go for the activity.
So I will see.